You will come through doorways that you didn't even know were there. See something unbelievable. But you have to believe it because it's right there in front of your eyes. Science is slow, methodical, boring. It's why in shows and movies every scientist is a futurist living a century ahead of society, restrained by current thought and morality, unfairly labelled insane. If the writer so chooses, and yes, I feel poorly again, sometimes it's just fun to create a unequivocally mad scientist and let them be judged by their times. As we see in today's short story, the subject, written and directed by... Timo Charanto. We're waking up. Okay, we're woken up. Behold the genius! Stumped by another failure. But the work must go on. Such is the burden of humanity's leading lights, such as Dr. James Suhandra, played by Buddy Ross. Subjek 097 ternyata tidak bisa beradaptasi dengan tubuh barunya itu. Yo, Damikov, you successfully kept a severed human head alive without lungs, without a spinal cord, even without a heart. You have already revolutionized transplant technology. Why are you turning people into legacy Pixar characters? Because it's cool! I mean, no one talks about Joseph Mengele because he was nice to kids or easy to get on with. They talk about him because he sewed people together and kept eyeballs on his walls. If only Suandra had been born in more open-minded times. Instead, he has to hide like a rat in the walls and trap guinea pigs all his damn self. I wonder how Mary Shelley's estate feels about her novel becoming so culturally ingrained it's hard to even sue people for copyright infringement. But either way, between the gruesome procedures, the sci-fi technology, and the fact he's experimenting on restrained human beings, really we can put all this together from context. But Booty really wants to mug. <laughs> Merasa sedih, takut, bingung, lupa. Jangan. Itu sebuah pertanda bahwa kamu hidup. So we get it. You're weird and creepy. Back off. Thank you, SA. We really didn't need to spend all this time trying to figure out what booty ate by the stains on his teeth. Oh, getting kinky, huh? Wanna choke me, daddy? Yeah, that's right, scuttle off. You look like me gong and smell like it too. Itu dia komandan! Eh, apa ini, apa ini? Ada apa ini? Okay, is he supposed to be a genius or an idiot? Because dramatic dialogue really doesn't work when you slow the scene to a crawl. I will say, with the news expositing how faith in the police has sunk due to their inability to catch Sohendra until now, they do know how to make up for it. Misi kita adalah menyelamatkan korban yang masih hidup. Bukan untuk menghampuni seorang pembunuh. Benar, pasukan? Benar, komandan! Yeah, okay, fine, just move your ass. At this rate, I say might die of starvation. Slowly. Oh, so damn slowly. Do they make their way into the lab? Jono is the first to see the body beneath the blanket. He vomits in shock and horror at the desecration before him, and the others barely hold back their revulsion. 
what lies before them is not human anymore. May its suffering have been swift, and let it now rest. Except she's still alive, she's there, still present and aware of them, begging for help, and answered with beatings and pointed weapons. Here we go. Right, quick dismantling. No one's gonna mourn for Zoendra after what he'd done, so no one will argue about them executing him. But that also meant someone had to make that decision. It's why there's a separation between a soldier and a commander, and why a soldier told to kill is not the same thing as a commander ordering them to kill. A commander assesses and makes a decision, and a soldier reacts to a situation. For Suendra, death was a punishment, for Essay, death would be a relief from her suffering. Except she clearly doesn't want to die, and Hassan just decides it's what's best for everyone else. And not because her death because her life would mean others' death, but just because she's been horribly victimized. It's the equivalent of a first responder deciding a trafficked human being doesn't deserve to live. And all of that is why Hassan is the bad guy. Played by Donia Lamsia. Hassan's murder boner is so big it short circuits the lights and gives Essay the chance to run away. Or at least that's what I assumed happened at first. See, with the power out, they have to shoot the lock of the door, and when they do that... Turns out Zoendra had the lab booby-trapped, in case anyone broke in to kill him and steal his work. In that order, specifically. Which is why it took a good five minutes before the trap snapped shut. If he'd been alive, he would have had the time to stop it. And I am contriving on the short's behalf, because as far as Chayanto is concerned, it only took till now because he needed the short to be an hour half long. Did I just say an hour half? The dust settles and Jono's camera takes in the carnage. Scattered body parts, men torn in half, and Suendra's voice mocking them, laughing as the recording tells them they're gonna die. They have to find another way out, so they search. But something stops Jono. Another soldier approaches another of the bodies. Jono begs him to stop, and sensibly he does, but fuck you! You gotta admire Jono's passion for his craft. Recognizing the angle he films that isn't optimal, he walks closer to really illustrate the scale and power of the unleashed beast snipping his co-workers in half, and the beast respects this enough to let him get a real nice camera tilt instead of killing him outright. Guard dog awakens. Subject 98 beautifully renders the soldiers apart, slowly enough for Jonah to really take in the spectacle, until Hassan decides to blow the scene. Boo! As for Essay, she is the first to wake up from the shock to her system. Whether that's because she is partly metal or from convenience, I don't know. But as she tries to escape, 98 comes after her. Trigger happy policemen ambush her. And through dumb luck, the floor vanished beneath her, plummeting her into the mad doctor's room of plans and blueprints. Weapon modifications, transplant rejection countermeasures, but most horrifying of all, her own bisected head preserved on a jar on the table, lending the question, What did he do to her? He strapped a video camera to Shania Srimaharani's face! By the way, the reason I call her S.A. is because the news identified her by those initials. Why they couldn't just say her name, I don't know, but since the doctor only referred to her as an experimental number, I'll make it a point to use her actual name. Or near as I can. He called her 99, and the other 98. That means there had to be at least 97 other people he did this to, and it's time to see what became of them. Hey! Oh. 
Halo. Ini. Mimpi. She mourns her humanity as the police charge in to kill her, to salt the earth and banish her to hell. This was done to them, but they're the monsters? Then she'll show them a monster! First person shooter sequence. You didn't think there wouldn't be a first person shooter sequence, did you? I'd show you more, but the scene isn't long enough. Besides, it's time to make the actual statement beneath the mindless violence. Body, mind and soul violated, discarded as a mutilated broken thing, branded a pitiful creature begging for the sweet relief of death by people who refuse to listen, in spite of all of that. She wants to live. Stuff this profound has no business in my Indonesian splatterfest. Indeed, soon as they turn around, Captain Hassan unloads his entire magazine into SA, sending her down the stairs. She's still alive though, and so he mounts and pummels her and rips stuff from her bloodied electronics. So engrossed is he, he doesn't notice Jono unload his entire magazine in him. Fuck you anyway, 98 is alive, and before Essay can rip the brain out of his skull, he's already cut Johnny into several pieces, leaving them both bleeding out and dying together. Except Essay doesn't, she just walks towards the sound of birds and beaming sunlight. <sighs> this short really didn't match my review style. And hopefully tomorrow... I'll feel good enough to actually learn the script by heart and not do this shit. Visual Spectacle doesn't begin to cover it. It's a Necrostorm style bloodbath with violence, gore and melodrama out the wazoo. I like to emphasize the telling of stories in my reviews and it had more to work with than Hotel Inferno did. But even so, the short drags itself out with dramatic pause upon heavy dramatic pause to stretch the runtime as far as it could. These long drawn out moments where character and audience alike fully take in what's happening continue throughout much of the short. With the more sensitive Yono throwing up at the sight of the missing girl S.A. and what Zohandra had done to her, and the other characters looking like they're about to cry, there is a sense of gravitas to the situation. Like the wheels are turning to truly process what's going on. On the other hand, with every turn of events needing a quiet moment of contemplation, it also grinds the movie to a halt, especially considering it's not a particularly complex story, and it had already put the audience through that for at least 10 minutes. About the story, it's deceptively deep. It could have been all a matter of soldiers having to rush in against an onslaught of monsters, and yet it was told from the perspective of one of the Mad Doctor's victims being branded a monster herself for what was done to her and fighting to survive. That is a powerful, if simple, message that snuck up on and surprised me halfway through. The subject is a tediously drawn out but beautifully rewarding short film. Very different and odd compared to its many siblings, but it provided a good time and hour for an hour. But it provided a good time and an hour. But it provided a good time and an hour and a half well spent. Even if next time I will probably be jumping forwards to the good bits.